over three decades. I hated running. When I was little, some bullies at school called me Da Xiang, which means elephant in Chinese because I was chubby. As a little kid, I didn't know what to do besides feeling sad and powerless. In my 20s, I had an eating disorder. I never pictured myself as a runner. I hated running. As you can see, I limped onto the stage because this morning, I finished the booking half marathon in the rain. Let me tell you about how I started running and didn't stop. On the morning of November 6, 2011, the day of New York City Marathon, it was windy and cold. I wanted, to, I wanted to sleep through the day, but my friend dragged me to cheer for the runners. Getting out of my bed was torture. As we walked towards to the route, I could hear loud cheering, and then I saw runners, thousands of runners. Everything was new to me. I noticed this one runner. He was limping, and then he stopped to stretch, and then he started running again. He has such an expression of determination. I was fascinated that something seemed so painful could satisfy him so much. Hmm. What does running 26.2 miles mean to him? I got to try this marathon thing at least once in my lifetime. I said to myself, that day, I put on my sneaker, went on my first run since the mandatory run in high school 15 years ago. 15 years ago. I could barely run for two minutes. <laughs> I wanted to stop. But the face of that determined runner popped into my head. So I pushed myself to try at least five minutes. The next day, I committed to running 10 minutes, double the progress. It was hard, but I did it. And I already feel I was a better version of myself. I keep adding five minutes of running until I was able to run 22 miles. And my body stopped craving the feelings of running. I was set to run my first marathon on November 4th, 2012. I was so excited and so ready to show the world what an awesome and cool person I had become. <laughs> Two days before the big day, the mayor canceled the marathon. I was devastated. The next year, I did run my first marathon in New York City, only two years after I began running. I did it. And the same friend who dragged me to see that first marathon was in the crowd, cheering me across the finish line. And you know what? I did not finish less. I finished average. This elephant has grown up and learned to run. Now, my goal was to qualify for the Boston Marathon. For a marathon runner, qualifying for Boston is like an athlete trying to qualify for the Olympic trials. They only accept time qualifications. Average wasn't going to do it. I need to run much faster. Now, before I tell you about what happened with Boston, I want to tell you about the worst marathon I have ever run. Two years ago, I ran my seventh marathon, still had not qualified for Boston. The night before number seven, I had barbecue for dinner instead of my usual pasta. And my noisy hotel neighbor meant I only got three hours of sleep. Mile 13 was when I began to lose it. My energy drained. I lost control over my legs. My body was begging for some sleep. Willpower was the only thing that kept me going. Then, at mile 14, my stomach was angry at me. I should not have had the barbecue last night. 
I had no choice but stop to use the bathroom. That was a variable running time. And then I heard voices like, hey, fake an injury. Then you can stop. Just write a good story on Facebook. You'll be fine. <laughs> no, don't stop. You can quit. You have trained the entire summer for this. Stay with me one mile at a time. Don't stop. These two voices constantly battle in my head after mile 14. I did grind through the entire 26.2 miles. Well, this picture was right before I crossed the finish line of my number seven marathon. Even though a part of me told me to stop, but the truth is that was my, personal, uh, my best performance ever. The fear of failure and my self-doubt crept the different stories in my head. If you have a goal, you have to keep going no matter how much doubt enters in your mind. You may not be a runner, but to truly accomplish anything in life, you need to complete your personal marathon. So where am I now? Well, I did finally qualify for the Boston Marathon last December. They needed me to run in three hours and 40 minutes. I ran in in three hours and 30 minutes. Six years after I laced up those shoes for my first five minutes run. When things used to get tough, the old version of me would shrink and stay in my corner. But running has changed me. I'm becoming the woman of true grit. A lot of people say, running is a metaphor for life. In life, you have so many moments of doubt, discomfort, and wanting to quit. You have to learn to embrace and then break through. The same is true with running. Throughout the years of running, I encountered countless of setbacks. Instead of quitting, they motivate me to even try harder. Any setbacks, it's also an opportunity to, tr uh, to learn, grow, and stretch. Eventually, I will succeed. Nike co-founder Fiona said, I believe in running. I believe if everyone can get out and run a few miles every day, the world will be a better place. If not for running, there's no this version of me standing here talking to you. I encourage you to start with five minutes and don't stop. Start and don't stop. You will see the benefits everywhere in your life. I will see you on the road. Thank you.